Hey, it's Jonathan with uh, some more devotional thoughts. Today is uh, Psalm 43, as I'm continuing through uh, book two of the Psalms. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the impression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. So, the first thing that jumps out at me at this passage that I was reading it was that first word, vindicate. Vindicator. Vindictive. Not really what first comes to mind when you think about God, right? When you think about, like, vindictive people, we think about, like, people that are that are really uh, negatively self-centered, that are um, revenge-focused. And that is exactly what the word means. That, that they seek out to, to make things right for themselves. And why is that possible? How can the psalmist say God is a vindictive being? The reason that that, that kind of a statement can be made is because God is perfectly holy. In God's perfect holiness, he can seek vindication righteously. See, God is the only holy one. Everything else is not. Uh, we, we read the passage in Revelations that the cherubim are, are worshiping God. The, the, uh, the, they're saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And, and that's so true. Holy, holy, holy. And we are not, 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 right? So we can say God is a vindicator. And he does it in a perfectly righteous manner. So the psalmist is, is crying out to God. And it almost feels like a continuation of Psalm 42. But he's crying out to God for help in this situation. There, there are unjust things happening uh, to him. There is deceit happening that's, that's causing him to have uh, struggles and difficulties and... Um, the, the right is not happening. So how does the psalmist deal with this? Well, he's crying out to God for vindication. He's saying, God, take up this battle as your own. Take up this battle as your battle to fight on my behalf. I need your help. Help me. Fight on my behalf. And then he says, why? For you are the God in whom I take refuge. You are my safe place. I can come to you. I can be safe with you. I can find peace with you. But then he says, why have you rejected me? You ever felt like that? Like in the midst of unjust things happening, the, the thing that comes to your mind is, if God was in control, this wouldn't be happening. I, I've thought that. I've had situations like that come up in my life where I'm thinking, man, where is God at? Why is, why is this happening to me? I, I know this isn't right and God's a righteous God. So why is this happening to me right now? And that's what you feel as the psalmist is expressing his, his pain, his mourning. He's mourning because of the oppression that he's receiving. But he's finding his hope in God. He's taking refuge there. And it isn't a question of whether God has rejected him or not. We are not rejected by God. We're beloved of God. We are cared for by God. He, he reaches out and he takes care of us exactly how we need to be taken care of because he is the perfect father. He's the model that we are to follow. So what's happening in those times? The difficulties that come are, are realities that we face that force us to wrestle in our souls and remember 
that God is in control. And, and why do we know that? Well, look what he does next in the passage. He's saying, I want to follow your truth, your light. Let them be my guide. I want to follow in that. I'm trusting you to lead me. I'm trusting you to take care of me, to make things right. I'm trusting you to vindicate. I'm trusting you with the, the vengeance that's due to make this bad situation right, the, the, the injustice that needs to be made right. I'm trusting God to accomplish his purposes. So he says, let them, the light and truth, let them lead me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. He's talking about the temple. Lead me to the, the tabernacle, to the temple. Lead me to the presence of your glory where I can worship. And then he talks about what that's like, going to the altar of God and uh, praising God with the lyre. He's making music. This is joyful praise that's happening. And look at how he describes God. God, my exceeding joy, exceeding joy joy like all the other stuff that's happening in the psalmist's life right now all the stuff that's happening in my life and in your life and the the dumpster fire of 2020 all that stuff that's happening pales so much in comparison to the amazingness of who god is and he shows that to us because he is our exceeding joy exceeding joy. Like I can take joy in my wife. I can take joy in my kids. I can take joy in my friends and opportunities and different situations, but exceeding joy. The psalmist talks about God being his exceeding joy. So much greater above and beyond joy. And my friend Brad pointed out a, another passage that this made me think of this week uh, from Romans 15. 13. Paul, in his writing, he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I think that's what the psalmist is getting at here, too. Like his focus needs to be on God. God, I, I got to focus on who you are. God never fails us. He never leaves us hanging. He's always there. He's always taking care of everything. He's never once failed in that capacity. He's perfectly faithful. All his promises he's kept perfectly throughout the millennia. So, all joy and peace in believing. May God fill you with all joy and peace in believing. That act of faith, believing, trusting God to be who he is, trusting him to accomplish his purposes as he said he's going to. I need that. I need that more and more every day. Because I fall into the trap of navel gazing right self-centeredness I, I just look down and i'm troubled and i'm sullen and the things that aren't right are overwhelming and i can't handle it and i get depressed and frustrated and sometimes angry because i'm not focusing on the greatest thing like all these things that are in the world that God uses for good, I'm, I'm not focusing on what the greatest good is. Like all these things in their goodness are supposed to point me to the greatest gift. And here I am stuck focusing on my circumstances. Just like the psalmist is talking about his circumstances. He's saying, God, I'm turning this over to you. Vindicate me. You take care of this. I'm trusting you to do what needs to be done here. And then at the end of the passage, he repeats Psalm 42. Um, it's twice in Psalm 42, and, and here it is again. Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me, hoping God? For I shall again praise him, my salvation 
and my God. He's preaching to himself like I need to preach to myself that my hope is found only in God. My hope is found only in trusting him and finding peace in him. When I get stuck looking at my circumstances, it's always overwhelming. But God's perfect love is found in faith. He shows it to us. He gives us faith to believe, remembering the greatest truth that, that as believers, our greatest need has been met in Christ. Our greatest situation, our greatest problems have been solved because of his death and resurrection. So we have hope and it is our greatest joy. And it's such a great joy that no matter what comes our way, we can look to him and have joy. That's it for this week. See you next time.